text speech or even code. So a lot of developers using the large language model to assist them in writing program, in writing programming. And because large language model is really powerful, it was trained on a large data set. So it is useful for a wide range of natural processing tasks, such as summarization, uh, question answering, and, and also a lot of other um, tasks. And, and, and the GPT is not the only large language model. There are several well-known LLM in the history, like GPT-3 was developed by OpenAI, and Bird was developed by Google, and, Fast, and Roberta was coming from Facebook. And when you are looking back in the development of an LLM, you will realize that before the introduction of a GPT-3, there is a lot of LLM in the history, like Elmo, GPT, Bird, GPT-2, Megatron, etc. And GPT-3 is far is much more bigger than other LLM. It has a 175 billion parameter within this model. And uh, because there are so many parameters, so and it will trend on a huge data set, so it's very powerful and it can be um, generalized to a lot of tasks. Another concept I want I want to introduce is the generative model. Generating model is a very special model that can learn the underlying structure of a given data set. And after that, it can generate new data point that was similar to the original data. Please be advised that the output was not purely a copy and paste in the generation. So, I mean, the new data may, may not be necessarily the same than the original data set. So let me give you an example to better illustrate the generative idea. Because the generative model is not only uh, can not only generate the text, it can also generate image. So this is the example of, I select from a paper. So in this paper, they develop an image generation model. And in the left-hand side is the input of the, for the model. And on the right-hand side, you see a lot of uh, image that was generated by the model. So you will see that when you give a portrait, the generative model can generate a lot of a portrait with different angle. And all of these output are similar to the input image, but they are not the same. They are similar, but they are not the same. So that's the that was the that was an important characteristic of the generative model. So when you are trying to using the result of a generic model, you should always keep in mind that the output is may not always be the truth because it was a generation, it was generation process, it was not copy and paste. So when you are trying to interpret the result of chat GPT, always keep in mind the result sometimes may not be the truth. Just be you need you need to be very careful about that. And what's the relationship between GPT-3 and GPT? Sometimes we will call, you will see a lot of article just mentioned that ChatGPT is GPT-3.5. Um, what's the relationship between these two? Actually, GPT-3 is uh, was released much earlier than ChatGPT. And GPT-3 is very powerful, but it's very hard to access because you need a lot of, you need a lot of a programming skill to access to GPT-3. And GPT-3 is not very easy to be communicated with the people. In order to improve the um, usability and also so to provide a user-friendly interface, OpenAI actually applied several uh, methods to make GPT-3 um, to be more easily accessible. And one of the major tricks they use is called RLHF, which stands for the reinforcement learning from human feedback. How can we understand this term? Actually, it's very easy because GPT-3 is just like a genius. You know a lot, but you don't know how to communicate with human. So as a human, you need to teach the model how to communicate with the human. So you will need a lot of a human teacher to provide feedback to the model so that, so that you can gradually fine tune the model so that you can provide the output that is fulfill the need of the human being. And this process, actually, first, they just um, 
try to build a trained model that can serve as a virtual coach. Virtual coach will, will teach the GPU-3 what is the desired output for the human being. And then GPT-3 will interact with the virtual coach in the virtual environment by using the reinforcement learning technique. So gradually, he will learn how to be, how to perform, and how to generate the result that human being is needed. And after that, uh, OpenAI also wants to, uh, in order to ensure the conversation is safe, OpenAI also add additional set of uh, um, um, safeguard or mechanism to make sure that the conversation will not include any illegal, violent, or biased material within the conversation. So then the chat GPT just come. And after I uh, introduce some of the background of chat GPT, then we can go to the next step. That's what's the presence of chat GPT. Since the launch of the ChatGPT, actually it's growing very fast. Within five days, we have more than one million users for ChatGPT. And within the first two months, there are more than 100 million users of ChatGPT. That is crazy and that is totally unbelievable because when you are looking back into the human history, there is no such web service or so, no such technology. Can be can have so much user in a short period of time, so it's totally crazy. So that's the reason why you will see there are so many discussion on the news and also on the social media about ChatGPT. However, since the launch of this tool, there are some debate arise in the community. Some people are arguing that does ChatGPT is really innovative or not, and there are also some people argue that. Does ChatGPT is really useful or is just a hype? And one of the famous um, research researcher in the field of deep learning and it and uh, um, artificial intelligence is this people who is Yang Lakun. He is a pioneer in this field. He said that in terms of underlying technique, ChatGPT is not particularly innovative. And uh, when he plus some posts idea on Facebook, there, actually there's a lot of uh, users just have a different opinion about that and they just they just argue with him on Facebook. But um, uh, from my uh, viewpoint, actually um, she, he is right because if you are thinking about the technical perspective, what ChatGPT do is actually using a very large data set and using a very large very complicated model with a lot of par parameter and also using a lot of computational resource spending a lot of time to train this powerful model if you are looking into the technical perspective it's not really innovative but the true innovation of the chat gpt is that it provides a user friendly interface so that everyone have an internet connection and browser can use the tool so that's uh, is that the innovation is is on the application side, is on the business side, is on the user interface side. So, so that's the reason why ChatGPT gets so many users within a short period of time. And there are some debate about whether ChatGPT is really useful or not. If you are familiar with the technology adoption life cycle, you will realize that when a new technology comes into the world, only a few people will start to use it in a very short period of time. Then the early adopter will start to try it. And if they feel that the tool is very, really useful, they will recommend your friend, your family, or even the public to use this tool. And gradually, early majority will start to use this tool. But even though you will still notice that there are some there's still some population, they are more conservative or even skeptical in using the new tool. So they will, and when they try the JGBT and they found sometimes they don't get what they want, they will say, I see that this tool is not very reliable. It cannot get what I want. But if you are looking into their use case more carefully, you will figure out that the reason they feel the tool is not very useful 
just because they don't really know how to use it. They don't spend enough, enough time to learn how to use it. So they feel it was not very useful. So actually, when you are trying to interact with ChatGPT, here are some tips. And I will introduce some of them in today's presentation. And what can ChatGPT do? I believe um, you already know some of them. For example, ChatGPT in translation, summarization, it can even write book or write code. If you are if you search on the Amazon, you will see there are a lot of books start to list ChatGPT as the co-author. It may be the second author or third author. And I believe that most of you should have some experience in using ChatGPT. If not, it's easy, no worry. You can just go to their website and sign up and create a new account. And after that, you can get access to their user interface, means your request or your comment. So you can input your prompt here and then submit your prompt and then you will get the answer you want. So this is one example. Um, this is the one example of the prompt I generate. So I asked, <coughs> I asked ChatGPT to do the translation. So I give it a sentence, how are you? And I asked ChatGPT to translate into several different languages. And it was definitely an easy, easy task for, for it. And another example is I asked ChatGPT to write a Python code to convert Word file to a PDF file. And you can see it can not only provide the code to you, it can also add some comment on the code and also some explanation on the thinking process. Even though sometimes the, the code may not be perfect, you need to revise the code by yourself also, or, or you can just uh, uh, talk with ChatGPT further to further um, revise the code when you found something something wrong. But it can definitely shorten the development time for development uh, dramatically. And when you are designing your prompt, there are some tips which we call the prompt engineering. It's a, like a, a technique you can learn to design better prompt. So here are some tips may be useful for your prompt. The first is please be specific so that you can get what you want. An easy way is to using the 5W1H, that means the when, where, who, what, why, and how. For example, you can say that you can design a prompt that is please tell me when and where Elon Musk was born. So that's very specific and you can get your answer quicker. Another tip is to add some constraint to enhance the output, the, perform, the, the quality of the output. For example, you can say that, please summarize this article with 200 words, so that you can make sure that you, you will not get a very lengthy uh, output. And you can also say, explain gravity in plain language to a 10 years old kid, so that you can make sure that you will get an easy output, so that it will be easier to be understood. And you can also add ChatGPT to act as some professional. Then, as they, they do something, for example, you can ask, ask them to act as a, a philosopher. Then you can ask them some question, maybe the meaning of life, something like that. And you can also provide some um, framework. For example, the SWOT SWOT analysis is a frequently used uh, business framework. So you can ask ChatGPT to using certain famous framework to analyze some scenario. And you can also ask ChatGPT to produce some table for you. So actually, when you provide more specific and also provide some constraint, you can more you are more able to make sure that the output will fulfill your need. And you can also give ChatGPT some example so that it can follow the thinking process. So here, there are some, uh, some uh, examples of a prompt. For example, if I ask the chat GPT, what is the reason of chest pain? This is actually a very general prompt. So you will get a very general answer, like maybe the heart-related problem, the gastrointestinal problem, lung problem, and so on. But it was very non-specific. If you want to get a high-quality 
answer, then you need to add some more constraint. So here, I ask ChatGPT to act as a physician of emergency medicine, then answer what is the reason of chest pain. Then ChatGPT will provide more, um, more um, life threatening differential diagnosis the emergency the ED doctor should be aware of, like acute coronary syndrome, hormone embolism, LT dissection, and so on. So if you know how to design a good product, you are more likely to get what you want. And this is another example. If you want to develop a new movie review sentiment classifier, you can give a few examples to ChatGPT, like, I love this movie. It was obviously a positive review. What's a waste of time? This is obviously a negative review. Then I enjoy this movie. ChatGPT will tell you this is a positive review. So this example, you can show some example to the model, then it will realize what you are looking for. And sometimes even when you are providing some example, it may not work as perfect as you expect. For example, if you are trying to ask ChatGPT to solve some mathematical problem, it may not work perfect and it will be very, very likely to make some error. And in that, in that complicated scenario, we will need to introduce another technique, which was called the trend of thought. Trend of thought is the idea of a, um, breaking down the step of a reasoning to the model so that it can, you, it can understand you more, more and solve the problem more accurately. So this example, is it also a mathematical question? So the question is, Roger have five tennis balls. He buy two more can of tennis ball. Each can has three tennis balls. Then how many tennis balls does he have now? So if you only if the example only provide the answer, it will be hard for the chat GPT to understand. But if you revise the example to be like this one, you provide the thinking process. You can say, Roger start with five ball, two can of the three tennis ball is six tennis, and it's six tennis ball, five plus six equal 11. You breaking down the thinking process and the reasoning step. So ChatGPT will understand your, your reasoning process and it can replicate what you do to answer another question. So that technique was called the channel form. That's also very easy very useful, but you are trying to solve a very complicated question. And if you are not really satisfied with the easy user interface, you can get more flexibility by using their playground. In their playground, you can actually select which kind of model you are trying to use. You can select a bigger model with higher complexity, but slower, but you can also select a smaller model 